Oh, <laughs> you should have seen your faces. Yeah, I know it's a very scary costume, but that's because it's Halloween is coming. Uh, and I thought I'd do a special video today here in Greenwich Village. We're going to do the dark side of Greenwich Village, covering some stuff you may not know about. We're actually in Washington Square right now, and everybody knows that this is built on an old burial ground, an old potter's field, that there are thousands of people buried underground. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that right near here at 29 Washington Place at the Brown Building was where the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire happened in 1911, killing 146 people. Everybody knows that. But I want to talk to you today about things that you may not know about in this neighborhood. It's going to be pretty sick, but prepare to be uh, spooked beyond belief. So, uh, you know, buckle up, baby. It's going to be uh, a ghoulish, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but that being said, before we start, check out my Patreon. Big, big, big uh, that's a big help. Nice segue, Tom. But uh, check it out. That's what keeps finding these things. Also, uh, you know, check, uh, subscribe. That's a big help. It helps the analytics. Uh, I have no idea what that means, but I think it's a good thing. And also, uh, like the video. Give it a little thumbs up, baby. That's a real quick, easy thing. Uh, I don't know. Aside from that, Eric, you ready to start this thing? I am ready to be thoroughly spooked. Good, because that's what's going to happen. All right, let's go. So our first stop here in Greenwich Village is 14 West 10th Street which is a pretty little street near uh, Washington Square. This is nicknamed the House of Death, which is a little on the nose, but uh, a lot of stuff has happened here. In fact, in the 1970s, this woman wrote a book uh, and there have been claims that up to 22 deaths have occurred in this building. Who knows, it's supposed to be haunted. In fact, by one of its famous residents uh, is uh, uh, Samuel Longhorn Clemens, also known as Mark Twain, ah, the guy who wrote Tom Sawyer. They say he haunts it as well. Someone claimed to have seen his ghost uh, dressed in all white, claiming, uh, my name is Samuel Longhorn Clemens and I got a problem I gotta settle. That was a pretty good impersonation, no? But the most notorious case happened in 1987. On November 6, 1987, uh, the daughter of Joel Steinberg, the semi-adopted daughter named Lisa, six years old, was taken off life support and died of blunt trauma to the head. Um, Joel Steinberg had actually, uh, was actually accused and uh, taken to court for abusing this daughter. Uh, the wife was also initially charged with negligence and failing to give medical care to the child. Uh, eventually the charges against her were dropped. Uh, in fact, her lawyer was Barry Sheck, who actually ended up being on O.J. Simpson's dream team of lawyers. I don't know if you guys remember O.J. Simpson. Uh, if you guys are over the age of 30, you probably remember that. But uh, this all happened in 1987. Joel Steinberg was eventually uh, uh, convicted of manslaughter, not murder, uh, and had years of abusing uh, Hedda Nussbaum. He was, take, he was actually sent to prison and was, was released in the early 2000s. It was a huge trial that swept the city. Everyone followed it very closely and he was eventually convicted. And all of it happened here in this house. In fact, after the uh, police started investigating, uh, once the child was taken to St. Vincent's Hospital here nearby, um, they found that the other child, Mitchell, an 18-month-old child, was actually uh, chained to his play playpen. The, the whole house was filthy. They found cocaine, they found money. It was a total mess. Um, and it all happened here. Kind of dark, but I told you this at the beginning, baby. You didn't listen. We still got a few more stops. All right, we're actually at our next stop. This is uh, 18 West 11th Street. You know what happened here, Eric? No idea. Well, you're about to find out. On March 6th, 1970, a huge explosion, a bunch of bombs went off in the basement of this building. It was an accident though, but here's what happened. So this woman named Kathleen Wilkerson, her dad actually lived here and gave her the keys to the place when he went on vacation to St. Kitts. She was a 25 year old girl involved in, uh, you know, some pretty questionable things. She hung out with the Weather Underground, which was a, a terrorist group in the late 60s, early 70s, that sought to kind of like, you know, they were protesting the Vietnam War, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, they got their name, the Weather Underground, uh, or the Weathermen, from the song, uh, from the song Subterranean Homesick Blues by Bob Dylan, where, where he says, you don't have to be a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. Anyways, uh, she has her friends come over and they do what kids do back then. They go to the basement and they make bombs down there. Go figure. 
And one day, um, in the, there was an explosion in the basement. Uh, 30 sticks of dynamite explode and, uh, you know, causing lots of damage to buildings around it. In fact, next door at 16 was where Dustin Hoffman was living at the time. And so, you know, they were, people were racing around. He was trying to salvage uh, his paintings, all kinds of different things. There's actually pictures of it. Uh, three of her fellow weathermen died in the blast. She got out, as did another woman named Kathy Bowden, or Bowden, and they, uh, they, they flee. Uh, they actually were, were naked at the time. Uh, so they went next to a, to a neighbor's house where they were clothed. The neighbor had no idea what was happening, and they flee and they basically are on the run for 10 years. Uh, eventually, Kathleen turns herself in. Her friend Kathy uh, is eventually caught in connection with an armored car heist. An armored car heist in 1981. You can't make this stuff up. That's insane. It's like out of a, you know, Bugs Bunny a cartoon. Anyways, it would be funny if, uh, you know, two security guards and a police officer didn't die in that, but she went to prison too. Um, in fact, uh, Kathleen is actually out of prison now. Uh, she works, uh, She works. I think, here in New York somewhere. Anyways, it all happened right here. This building was rebuilt in 1978, and it looks all modern, which is one of the reasons why it's kind of out of whack with the other buildings around it. Um, but all of it happened here on March 6th, 1970. The dad gave his daughter the keys to this house. He comes back, his whole house is blown up. I guess he didn't, he had never heard the song uh, Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cyndi Lauper, else he would have known that his daughter was going to explode the basement with a bunch of terrorist bombs. Go figure. Anyways, let's go to the next stop. Whoa. I'm here at the Jefferson Market Courthouse here, right off of 6th Avenue in Greenwich Village. It's a very beautiful building, huh? It's actually designed by Calvert Vox, who's famous for designing uh, Central Park. Built in the 1870s, great. Now a public library. I'm not here for that. I'm here for the area behind it. This is the Jefferson Market Garden. Uh, since we are talking about true crime today, a lot of you guys are watching that and, you're, and seeing this place and you're thinking, I know why he's there. Because this is where Miranda was married in Sex and the City. <laughs> No, that's not that big of a crime. I'm actually here because this was the site of a famous, well, notorious detention center, jail. Uh, from 1932 to 1974, this was the women's house of detention here in Greenwich Village. It was an 11-story building, this huge building that was located right here that specifically housed women. In fact, some of the famous prisoners who were housed here, uh, Dorothy Day the famous uh, Catholic and anarchist uh, activist was housed here. Uh, Angela Davis, the, 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 one of the FBI's most wanted civil rights uh, leaders was housed here, as was uh, Ethel Rosenberg, the spy for the Soviets, who was actually executed uh, for her spying on the nuclear secrets of the United States. Um, it was not the best, uh, oh, another person I forget almost, is Valerie Solanas. She was a famous stalker. She's the woman who attempted to murder Andy Warhol. You guys know who he is. Uh, and she was the author, one of the authors of the Scum Manifesto. Scum being the society to cut up men. Sounds like a really exclusive group. Um, anyways, all those people were housed here. Um, very, very uh, poor conditions, let's say. In fact, there was a book written by a woman named Sarah Harrison in the late 1960s about this place, and it was called Hellhole to give you an idea of what it was like. Uh, but what was crazy about it was that it was this huge building located smack in the middle of Greenwich Village. So you could just look up into the windows of all these prisoners. And you know, there would be protests outside, people would yell up to them, but they could also communicate back to like family members and friends. You could have your mom in there and just come up and be like, hey mom, where's the salt in the cupboard? And she could just yell back down like, look to the right of the cornstarch, honey, and tell your dad I say hi. Just like it was nothing, you know, kind of nuts. And it started to creep people out when, you know, there was yelling all the time here and also the conditions inside were pretty terrible. So they shut it down in 1974, moved the prisoners elsewhere. But also before it was a woman's house of detention, it was actually still the Jefferson Market Jail. And one of the famous women who stayed there was Mae West. In the 1920s, she was arrested for her extremely scandalously titled play. It was awful. It was just the most offensive thing you could think of. And you just weren't having it. The title of the play was sex. The times they change, I guess. Uh, yeah, she was arrested for that. 
let's not title this video sex, otherwise YouTube's going to demonetize us, and I can make those sick big bucks. All right, let's keep moving. So we're here at our last spot. Yep, crossing the street, that's pretty scary. <laughs> this is the site of a grisly murder in 1990. Uh, how's this for like a pose? I look pretty natural, huh? Pretty like loose? Very grisly. Yeah, I guess so. Anyways, in 1990, this was the site of a murder uh, that uh, actually continues to be unsolved. Uh, now, to set the stage, in 1990, New York City was having trouble with crime, specifically violent crime. In fact, that year, there was 2,245 murders. That's like six a day. Uh, it was pretty bad. Now, July 30th, 1990. Right around the corner at 61 Jane Street, this guy named John Reisenbach uh, used to live, right? His phone is out of order, so he comes down to use a pay phone that was located right in this spot. Now, uh, today, uh, pay phones, you know, you just know them as public urinals. But back then, people actually used them to make phone calls. Go figure. So he comes here to make a phone call and calls his friend Larry Schatz. He talks to him for a while, and eventually Larry, on the other side of the line, hears the words, Give me the money! Give me the money! And then nothing. Larry freaks out. He comes here only to find police and like ambulances, all that stuff. Fears the worst, goes to the hospital and runs into John's wife to find out that John had been murdered. He had been shot three times uh, and actually staggered away and died 20 feet away from the phone with the phone just dangling there. Kind of crazy. Uh, they began the investigation to try to find the person who uh, who actually did the crime. They picked up a man named William Emerson at a park nearby, uh, started to investigate him. He was held at Rikers Island for months and months, only to find that they didn't have any evidence really against him. He was just a homeless guy. Uh, and uh, the case continues to be unsolved. Kind of crazy. They never found this guy. Never found the murderer. So when you watch all these CSI shows or cold case or whatever, and they blow the dust off of a file, this is one of them. One of the cold cases that has just kind of rotted away and no one knows anything about. But they've started a foundation in his name to uh, help give money to different neighborhoods to fund neighborhood watches and programs to cut down on violent crime. This neighborhood today is extremely safe. There's almost zero violent crime. Uh, it's very fancy, <laughs> so that may be why. But uh, yeah, we're actually nearby some other sites that you know I could have mentioned, but they're not really... They're well more well known, like around the corner is actually uh, White Horse Tavern, which is where Dylan Thomas uh, last drank before he died and fell into a coma. Uh, the Chelsea Hotel, also right near here on Jane Street, is the plaque for Alexander Hamilton because he died in a house that was owned by a man named William Bayard right in this area, and the plaque uh, is located right here on Jane Street. He died in a duel. I'll cover that in a different video, don't you worry. But right now, we're going to go to our last stop. You hear that, Eric? Huh? The last stop. Very spooky. Yeah. Ah, well, we're here at our last stop, guys. I'm here on the Hudson River. That's right. Uh, there's not really a specific crime or anything I was going to talk about here, but... Uh, we are across the water from New Jersey, which is kind of a crime in itself. <laughs> I'm kidding, relax, just a joke. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I, I, although in, in all fairness, in this past summer, they found a body floating in the Hudson River right near Tribeca, so that's something. And they found bodies here all the time. Who knows when the next one will pop up? I mean, the night is young. <laughs> I'm kidding, I only look like Charles Manson, relax. But that being said, we're almost done with this tour. Uh, I want it to end, but before I do, I just want to say, I remind you, please check out the Patreon if you liked it. Support, help, uh, there's all kinds of levels. You get little extras and stuff. It helps fund these things. Also too, like the video, subscribe to the channel at the very least, that's a huge help. Uh, but that being said, Eric, uh, what'd you think, man? Sick crimes. Sick crimes is right. Um, I don't know if there's any, such a thing as a sick crime, okay? Don't go out there and commit crimes. I don't want to be, you know, uh, held accountable or whatever, blamed, uh, but yeah, I think the only crime we are committed today is that of giving you guys too much good information, come on. Uh, but yeah, also too, I do have videos on West Village, Greenwich Village, Washington Square uh, that you should check out, so uh, you know, <laughs> there you go, there's your sick plug there. And uh, aside from that, I think we're ready to go, I'm gonna go uh, 
before it gets too dark. <laughs> you know, it's kind of scary out here. I know there are little kids playing and, you know, people with strollers and stuff, but it's scary. I gotta go before I get beat up and have my camera taken away from me. I'll be out 50 bucks. That's pretty much it. See y'all later. Sick. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.